In this episode of Killing a Duramax, we're going over 600 horsepower. No, wait, 700 horsepower. I'm Gail Banks. Let me bring you up to speed. We ran the stock turbo right through its EGT redline and pushed it to 134,000 RPM, way over its limit. We made 567 horsepower, but the turbo was on kill. That was it. It was tapped out. It was done. Good night. Since then, we bolted on a Precision 7675 turbo and a turbo smart wastegate, but we were out of lift pump. So we called our friends at Holly who sent us a 12890 billet inline fuel pump, a 12851 high pressure regulator, and their seven micron fuel filter. Look for my unboxing video coming up. But first, let's bang this turkey. So what we're gonna be watching here is the speed of the turbocharger, and this one has about 132,000 limit. We're gonna watch the turbine inlet temperature, the air fuel ratio, the turbine inlet pressure versus the boost pressure, both in gauge readings. We're reading ambient here, compressor discharge or intercooler inlet here, and intercooler outlet or manifold air density here. This is what counts, manifold air density. The manifold air density is in pounds per thousand cubic feet, and that air mass is what you're mixing with diesel fuel at 18 to 1. The greater the manifold air density, the greater the fuel we can put in, and the higher the power output. Let's go for 600 horsepower and see where we're at. And if we're happy with that, maybe we'll go for seven. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on the air fuel, etc. Oh yeah. There we come. Oh man, I love this turbocharger. The boost is way above the drive pressure. 300 horsepower. Manifold air density. 180s, 190, 200, 210, 220, 30, 40. Woo, whoa, here we go. Coming up on 600, there we are. 600 horsepower, 3,300 RPM. Yeah, let's trim it to 3,300. That's our sweet spot. Okay, turbine inlet temperature is 1230 in round numbers. Air fuel, fuel ratio is real lean, 22 to 1 plus. Drive pressure is right at 30 pounds and boost pressure right at 34. Beautiful, beautiful. We're making around a thousand pound feet of torque at the horsepower feet. This is comfortable. Let's go for 700. Everything else looking good? Yeah. Cooling. 650, 660, 670, 680, 90, 700. Let's go for 18 to 1, 7, I saw 711. Okay, that's it. Woo, I swear I saw 711 horsepower, did you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I need a Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, 711. Oh my God, I wonder what the torque number was. I was kind of watching EG, EGT, we we're 1500 plus. The torque number was definitely over 11. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we're making 1100 and some pound feet at the, of torque at the horsepower feet. <laughs> all right, we just made 711 horsepower on a stock L5P Duramax. Who knew, who knew we would get this far and not destroy the engine? We got to 567 with a stock turbo, and we got to 711 with a precision, 
And we had to stop there because we're out of fuel injector. I'll tell you more about that in a while. Let's, let's look at the results, though. This is pretty uh, exciting for me because I constantly am learning stuff, and there's a lot of that going on right here. With the stock turbo, we've got the turbo pretty well maxed at 134,000. Both these turbos have a speed limit at about 132,000 RPM. The stock turbo made a little over 32 pounds of boost at 134,000 RPM. That's 2,000 RPM over the red line. And the compressor discharge temperature was 431 Fahrenheit. I've got a rule of thumb. I don't like compressor discharge in work engines or racing endurance engines, much over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And the guys at Precision kind of agree with that. I'm, I'm gonna go back and ask them for more. Where's the real destructive temperature? Uh, can I crowd that a little more? Because I want 800 horsepower. At 431, we're maxing out the stock turbo. It's danger time. You don't want to tune with th this as your goal, 567 horsepower in a stock turbo. Going to the precision, at 711 horsepower, our boost went up 22%. We're at 39.6 PSI, but we're only at 101,000. This thing has lots of shaft speed overhead, but we're at 399 degrees. You see why I want to seek permission from Dan back at precision for something like I'm asking for 430. Can I go to 430 and run it there for a while? Will that be safe? How much margin for error is there? So you've got quite a difference in temperature, the 22% more boost pressure, forcing the air density in from the intake manifold into the cylinders. But let's go over to the turbine and have a look at that. Turbine inlet pressure or drive pressure, we compare to compressor discharge pressure on the turbo. And we call that a boost to back pressure comparison, B to B. And we do that as a ratio. We divide the exhaust pressure into the boost pressure. If it's less than 100%, that's no man's land, especially if you get way the hell down. We've got a 53, over 53 pound drive pressure reading. And that's with no, no exhaust after the turbo and we're at 1,549 degrees. This turbocharger has a 1,472 continuous service rating, and you can spike it to 1,508 for a minute or two here and there. But that's it. That's Borg Warner's rating. The ECM in the truck won't let you go to 1,508. It is trimming you, if you're a tuner guy, it's trimming you to 1472. And if you're doing it with flash tuning, I don't know. If you're cracking the ECU as some of these guys do, good luck. Going over to the precision, the turbine inlet pressure is down 37%. And the horsepower went from 567 to 711. That's amazing. And the turbine inlet temperature is down 37% to 1,522 degrees. I'm putting a self-imposed red line on the precision at 1,600, although they've told me I can go to 1,750. The boost to back pressure with the stock turbo is way down, 61%. If the two boost and back pressure were equal, that would be 100%. That's a nice place to be. In a lot of street-driven stuff, the boost to back pressure ratio might come down in, into the 80s at sustained throttle. But lower than that, and it's off the table as far as I'm concerned. Going over to the precision, the boost to back pressure ratio, dividing the 33.6 into the 39.6, is well above 100%. 118%. It's 57% higher than the B2B with a stock turbo. That's a huge change. And what we get for horsepower, we ran 18 to one air fuel on both tests. I don't like to go lower than that, which is richer, B2B, 
because it produces a hell of a lot of smoke and much more EGT. So, in conclusion, with the stock turbo, we made 567 horsepower at 18 to 1 air fuel, and with a precision, we made 144 more horsepower, 711 at 18 to 1 air fuel ratio. Now it's time to answer the question, why are we out of injector? So the recommended lift pump pressure feeding the Denso HP4 high pressure injection pump on the Duramax L5P is 40 PSI minimum to 60 PSI maximum. In Dyno 2, we ran 60 PSI lift pressure on the 567 horsepower pull with the stock turbo. That was at 3,000 RPM, and the Denso HP4 could only make about 1,985 bar or 28,800 PSI fuel rail pressure feeding the injectors. As a rule of thumb at full power, I like to get the fuel injected in a maximum of 40 degrees crank rotation. Beyond that, we get elevated EGTs and piston damage, usually where the injected fuel impinges on the combustion bowl to piston crown radius. So let me show you what I mean. Hey, where'd you get the shirt, Mike? I bought it online, thankspower.com. Oh my God. Must be our commemorative shirt. Yeah, spool is cool. Yes, it is. So, here we go. The injector is at the center of the cylinder. It injects out at an almost flat angle. So, as the piston comes to TDC and we start the injection, your radius I was talking about is this radius and the injected fuel is down in the bowl. So we start injecting, the piston comes to top dead center, goes back down again. If we go beyond 40 degrees of crank angle, then we burn this section of the piston. Your fuel is impinging right on that radius. And with valve reliefs, which stock pistons don't have, that radius is even lower, so you're more susceptible there. So now let's look in cylinder and see what that looks like. Right now, the piston is down the hole. We're 20 degrees of crank rotation before top dead center. And Mike, if you can bring it to top dead center, not much travel, huh? And now back down again to 20 after. You see what's going on here. As it starts down the hole, if you're still spraying, you're going to come right across this edge and superheat that radius. Now go on down to 30. You see how quickly the piston accelerates down the bore. 20 after, we were hardly down the bore at all. We're still injecting in the cup. 30 after, we're quite a ways down. Let's go to 40 after. See what's going on here? Now we're spraying the cylinder wall. So we built a pro stock truck back in 07, 08, somewhere in there. We took a road race engine out of a road race truck a project we we're doing with GMC, put it in an S10 Pro Stock chassis, named it the Sidewinder Type D for drag race, and we went out and started lowering the record, first into the low eights, and we were the first into the sevens. Finally, before we retired the truck in 09, we went over to Speed World in Arizona, and we lowered the record to a 777, at 180 flat. Seventy-seven at 180 exactly. Yes. To do that, we didn't have big enough injectors. So I, I said to the fellow that was tuning it, we're putting this thing on kill. And we took it out, to, 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 total injection time was crowding 50 degrees. I said, We'll probably hurt the pistons, but we may get the record. And here's what we did to the pistons. You can tell there were seven spray holes in the injector, and you can see where that injected plume came right up out of the bowl. It literally melted the aluminum. There's metal spray here, 
metal spray on the cylinder walls and metal went through the turbochargers. Nothing really got too hurt, but we bought a set of pistons and we got the record. You don't want to do this on the street in the truck you drive every day, but a lot of tuning setups where they unleash the EGT and inject through stock nozzles, that's what could happen. At 1985 bar and 3000 RPM with stock injectors, enough fuel to hit our 18 to one air fuel ratio took 36 degrees of crank rotation. To make more power with stock injectors, we need more injection pressure. So we thought maybe charging the, the HP4 with higher lift pressure would improve its efficiency. So we turned our Holly lift pump system up to 90 PSI to see what would happen. Now the HP4 made 2300 bar at 3300 RPM and we hit 711 horsepower at 18 to one air fuel. But it took 39.3 degrees of crank rotation to hit those numbers. If we hope to ever kill this Duramax, it looks like it's time to call s, &S for some 50 over injectors. If you wanna see us break 800 horsepower, I suggest that you subscribe.